still talking about Nigeria's 59th um, independence. And right now we have the director, African Center for Parliamentary and Constitutional Studies in our Abuja studio, Mr. Emmanuel Anyebunam. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. So the conversation uh, switches to, I mean, you have heard our guests here say over and over again that we need to buckle up on the leadership uh, quotients. How do you react to that? Well, it's the, <laughs> it's the recurring issue for six decades now. So basically, let me say it uh, historically. In December 1944, before Rich, uh, Richard Richards presented the 1946 constitution, he made this statement about Nigeria, that the problem of Nigeria is to create a system you, that will be able, at varying speeds, smoothly, and uh, amicably bring the diverse parts of my elements together towards a cohesive, integrated uh, unity. That the present system in Nigeria as at then, and it's up to today, is, has a lot of inconsistencies that are unsuitable to expansion within Nigerian basis. Bearing this in mind, he mentioned, like uh, the last speaker talked about institutions, which has always been the issue at stake. Cognitive, regulatory, and normative uh, institutions are the hallmark of modern governance. Nigeria has separated from it. We can no longer differentiate between state and government, and that is the issue. State is the entity, and the population it has a permanent phase and future. While government comes and goes and is under the state, now we have seen individuals now transform into states, which has been the usual African problem that have seen the likes of uh, Mugabe stay for 30 something years. Now we are now bust into a, a situation. You've heard uh, what our, our present death status is. After exiting from the Paris Club in 2026, 20, now we can no longer even think of tomorrow. So the basic issue now is to take a clear look at what the situation is on ground. After 60 years, barely we have only 12 calendar months to hit 60 years, and we are still a toddler by every estimation. Uh, generating electricity is a headache. Now, when you we'll, we'll, co we'll come to that, Mr. Ayegwena. We'll, we'll come to that uh, briefly, modern economy. Mr. So Ayegwena, one moment. Uh, but you said something the other time that I think many people would also find interesting and would want to understand better. You drew a difference between government and the state. Could you please expatiate on that? Yes. Yes, when we talk about the state, we are talking of the encompassing setting of a territory, population, government itself, and then sovereign power. But when we are talking about government, we are talking about a temporary setting. Who comes now? We are like in the United States, you have the Republican Party now. We have here the APC, the PDP has gone. But now when the government assumes the status of a state, it now takes an imposition on all of us. It drives up the system. You see dictatorship as is what, is what we are almost experiencing at the moment. So now until we be able to separate between the state, which has what? A permanent future, and which also subsumes the government, that the government will now be guided by the rule of law and seeing itself as a a machinery and an institution of the state and not the state itself. Okay, that Mr. Yebuna, one moment, one is, moment. That has been a One moment, Mr. Yebuna. So now. who are the people that are supposed to foster the existence or the strength of the state, government after government? Who are the people that are supposed to be playing the leadership role in, at, this, at this, when we look at the state when, as opposed to government? When the institution, when the institu when the institution of the state now have their independence, like the last speaker has said, when INEC goes on its own without any interference, and when the, sec the security is manned without any interference of any person, and the central bank lives up to its role, then the state now functions. Local government will have its autonomy by having its funds on its own without any manipulation. And then when any individual runs out of the, the boundary of law, he now faces the consequences and sanction as, of, as established by the state then we have the rule of law, and then the Constitution now becomes supreme and have that overriding power over every individual, 
over every institution of whoever is under the state, when we come to that, then we will not have the Nigeria of our dream. And that is what we are clamoring for. And that is what is, the, is expected of each and every one of us at the moment. Mr. Iguna, I'm, I, I, I'm very much interested, and I'm sure many people are, to find a way to institute or strengthen the institutions of state away from government. How do you think we can do that? We can do that by, like I have said, basic education is important because it has now, we have now clouded this because the institutions are no longer there. Nobody says anything. The civil society tries its best and the press on piecemeal measure. When the state, when the state lives up to its billing, now in the state, civil servants' salaries are not paid. It is only within election, even when you are owing them four years' salary. When you come to election, you release some amount of money to them. Then they hail you for that moment. You go in. After you stay for eight years, the state will now have a recovery commission to ask you to account for the money, which you will not even transfer the account. So what we are saying is that if these institutions, let's take the central bank for instance. Since Abu Kadir Ahmed left the central bank, no other staff of Central Bank have mounted there that saddle as a governor of Central Bank. Now you think of the career of those who are doing this. They will end up as deputy governors. And you go to the private commercial banks they are supposed to oversee and bring Central Bank governors. And it has led to a lot of trouble. So these are the issues we are saying that when the, you have robust population who now owns the state, the sovereign power belongs to the people. That's why it's democracy. When we achieve that through good education and institutions that are vibrant and up to the setting, then you will now have a difference between the state and the government. And then whoever comes in now knows that he is a servant that is accountable to the people, that he is at best a steward and not a commander in chief in the real context of democracy. Well, um, I, I don't know how we can achieve this because to many people now, uh, while what you're saying is sounding valid, the question of how to make this happen, how to make this a truism, is an issue. Which institution or which arm of government do you think can help us to achieve this? On the one hand is the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. The executive has tenured uh, stay of office. The legislature, they have tenured stay of office. The judiciary also, you know, one way or another, they have tenured, uh, you know, uh, stay in office. So how do we strengthen these institutions beyond, okay, so you've mentioned education. Education of whom? By whom? Edu education of not only those who are in formal schools, education of the populace, because the driving force is political party, if you take it by Nigerian constitution. Now, if you go to the headquarters of the two political parties, you will see that they are very, virtually moribund. The po state policy has to come from them because they give birth to those who are the government. Basically, I will go back again to what Obama said to Africa when he came to Ghana, that in the 21st century, capable, reliable, and transparent institutions are the key to success. Independent legislature and judiciary Honest police force, a, a, a vibrant civil society. These are what gives room to democracy. These are what matters in people's life. You need strong institutions, not strong men. So what we are saying is that civil society, collectively Nigerians should come to bear. We need each and every one of us who consider ourselves into what? A whistleblower to have what? Our collective uh, treasury. As we are saying, we are safe layering gas in 21st century. Look at the essence of climate change. We, are not, we have institutions that are, not the, that are not accountable, not are they transparent. So these are the issues now that the 21st century brings all of us as owners of the country. And once we do that, we will be able to leave the sentiment, traditional sentiment of religion and ethnicity and face a collective project which will make this country to work. Six decades has gone, and we are set up by every estimation. And this is what we are clamoring for. Now, Mr. Ibn, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I want us to stay on this a little longer because I'm trying to get a better understanding. Governments have tenure. Do states, yes. do, do institutions of state have the same tenure as governments? Because if we say that, the, if we say that 
governments are tenured and uh, states, you know, is the one that is always there, come, come rain, come shine, and governments come to ride on that. So I'm, I'm still wondering how, we, because what you are talking about is essentially about leadership. We have chosen democracy as our way of governing ourselves. And that's what, that's what we have been doing straight for the past 20 years. Nigeria is going to be 59. We're going to be celebrating that tomorrow. So is this a problem that is new or is something that's always been with us? And how can we make it the way it ought to be? Let, let me uh, recap once again. It is an inherent uh, problem which started uh, uh, from the colonial days because the colonial masters did not see a difference between government and uh, the state. And then our leaders had the best of us from their selfish instance by leaving the institutions of, the, of government and then now trying to entrench themselves as the state. I say that the state is permanent. Then the government, when it comes, has a tenure. And in the course of the channel, you see manipulation. That is where the problem is. Now, when they go to manipulate the system of the institutions of the state to suit their tenure, to suit their own personal entrenched uh, interests, then now the state uh, suffers. So what we are saying now is that we should be able to liberate the state from these uh, manipulations through government. When you are a government, you have, you have taken oath to defend observe and protect the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Ask God Almighty to help you. Therefore, you will go by the rules. You will be able to, an to enact a law and go by it. Minimum wage was a what? A law, an act, new minimum wage. We are still struggling over that. The four refineries in this country have not worked for how many years? We are still a major importer of petroleum products while we are a leading exporter of the same product. If we talk as at 2006, PDP was telling us about 9,000 megawatts of electricity. As we speak today, billions of dollars have gone into that project and we have nothing. All we are now subjected to is that uh, metering is an issue, then new tariffs will come up, VAT will come in, and the rest of them. So the fish, a litany or endless litany of taxation. Meanwhile, the dividends of democracy are not there. The roads are all in the lapidated situation. Now, the Minister of Aviation has told us that there is 8% increase in uh, air passenger setting because every person who goes with, through the road goes through a nightmare and you may end up into the hand of kidnappers. So these are the issues we are saying that if the state, if the government keeps within its boundary, therefore, the state will now be emboldened and then to challenge the government in such a way that if you fall out of order, within four years of election, the ballot will now be stronger than the bullet. Like I see, normally in a, the military balance, you will say that soldier go, soldier come. Barack will remain the same. The barrack is the state. So let us now use the government as the soldier. So in this context, all I am saying is that having said six decades on empty handed, I have always said, characteristically, the last public assignment of Tafawa Balewa, blessed memory, was second Niger Bridge. After almost six decades, the same bridge then when we had not up to 2,000 cars in the whole of Eastern region, is still carrying us. And second Niger Bridge has been commissioned by how many Nigerian heads of states? Lagos Ibado Express Road is also a case in point. So all we have said is collectively, it is not well with us. It is not yet to Uhuru. Therefore, we are clamoring now that we should now be able to liberate ourselves from this uh, endless litany and the swearing rhetorics that affect us nothing. Let us go down and say, this is what the country needs, and this is what we are doing. Let us have what? Cost benefit of our investment and money. If we have an appropriation act signed and passed by the National Assembly, assented by the president, within 12 calendar months, it is our law, and it must be what? There must be sub subvention to put into execution what we have presented as our budget for the year. And this is what we are saying. And down to the local government, whatever left the concentrated revenue fund, the local government must get to them. It is not for the governor or for whoever it is. And then if we get this sorted out, then the regulatory authorities should be, be able to be at the police force has gone, gone to sleep. We watch a situation. 
where a kidnapper arrested by the police was released by the military. And we are still clamoring over that. So the issue now, and I have said, how many inspector general of police have we had since 1999 for crying out loud? When will they have time to settle and have what? Stable program they will execute. If you, I can take, bet it now, if you ask 10 Nigerian police officers who was their best IG, you will be surprised that no less than eight of them will tell you that it was Tafa Balogu. Then we should be able to holistically look at ourselves and then the institutions within us and then now know what to do as we now march into what? 60 years of uh, nationhood because it shows that we have gone beyond the rhetorics. It is no longer what? A smiling affair that after 60 years, we still like the basics in terms of governance. Uh, Mr. Ayubun, I'd like you to take us through a historical trajectory now, uh, talking about uh, individual, strong individuals versus uh, weak institutions. Um, you know, take us back to independence. You, you already indicted the colonial masters as saying that um, they didn't draw a line between institutions of state and governments. But we have had so many over the past uh, 59 years, and uh, of course, we'll continue to grow. So. How, do we, how did we get to the point where individuals are much stronger than institutions? And what do we need to do to reverse the trend 59 years after? Yes, uh, initially when we, when we started uh, political, let me take it from uh, political parties. Our first political party was uh, the Macaulay's uh, National Democratic uh, Party, NNDP. It came up and took over Lagos and the uh, Clifford Constitution gave only three seats to Lagos and one to Calabar. Within 10 years of his grip in Lagos, the Le what became Lagos Youth Movement, later became Nigerian Youth Movement, came up on a vibrant setting and snatched power from it. Then you will see there, there was a what? A patriotic drive. Because in the battle that broke up that uh, political association, uh, Samuel Akinsanya uh, aligned with uh, uh, NSC Koli. While Azikiwe felt well, um, uh, sorry, um, Akesanya uh, were aligned with uh, Ikoli, and then Azikiwe felt okay, he himself took the other area. Then they did not look at what? Ethnic disposition. When NCNC came up as Niger National Council of Nigeria in Cameroon, it was over the colonial masters issue on Second World War and King's College. When they met, then Macaulay has joined force with Azikiwe, and then they move on national setting. It was moving until 1951, when my fasting constitution came. Action Group and MPC, nine came up. Nigeria now took a three-dimension setting of political parties. Even as at then, we must give it to some of them who lived up to the bearing that Nigeria is what we called for. So MPC, NCNC then left its national basis and became an Eastern uh, government uh, pattern because Azikiwe lost out in Western region over the same ethnic uh, setting and then went back to the East. But we would have been able, because there was no setting then, to bear us together, but we, on that passage more or less, we groped into independence still having these diversive tendencies, which a lot of people felt that it was okay for us then. But when the military came, he said, no, we are now trying to do what? Reverse the trend. Created the 12 states. After the 12 states, the next trouble came up. That we have not even solved the problem of what? Ethnicity, by what we are doing. From 12 states, we moved to 36 states. The problem remained there because there has not been what? The basic uh, vision that when I am in Abuja, I'm still seen as somebody from the East. For crying out loud, a black character sat on the White House, Obama. And yes, we have seen the tendencies that has reverted to, towards that now with what Trump is doing. But all the same, the collective uh, build of this United States is behind them. So we are saying that uh, we should build Nigeria. It is our own. We have no other country than this country. So let us come together, look at our institutions, look at the infrastructures. The man today 
60%, I have always said that, 60% of active Nigerians are in Abuja and in Lagos. And without crying out loud, the sixth economy in Africa today is Lagos. Therefore, we should see Lagos quick even in the colonial days because Western region kicked against taking Lagos as a federal setting out of the then Western region. So all these we are supposed to do, to hear that there are Nigerians today who will give quick notice to their fellow Nigerians and we all keep quiet, is a big challenge on our nationalism and patriotism. Okay, so Mr. we Mr. are now calling for that leader who will stand out and that political party who will stand firmly and say this is Nigeria and we are moving this country forward if it is electricity transparently. Uh, Mr. 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 Iguana, very quickly, like very quickly. Let's take call about. Let, let's, let's take this very, very quickly. I would like you to very, very, very quickly in about 60 seconds or less veer into this. The average age of some of the leaders that you mentioned, you know, before we got independence and after, their average age was uh, 27, 28, 29. Uh, but now we have a very, very huge youth population that's maybe an average age of, say, 27, 28 as well uh, today. What do you think that population can do to help reverse some of the trends uh, you know, that, that you have outlined in our leadership question? The, the World Climate Change uh, Advocacy, led by a 16-year-old, Greta Thunberg, and the world today is driven by what? Electronic uh, media. And where we have seen Zuckerberg and uh, the likes of uh, Bill Gates, now richer than states, especially African states. So the youth, I see clamoring on them that they should leave entertainment and face serious issues. 80% of Nigerian population are less than 30 years old. Therefore, it is their world. They should now face what? Serious issue of governance and engage themselves. And parents themselves will do the best to take them away from what? This BB Niger and the Beth Niger. It is enough for that. Let them face serious issues or challenge of governance and then now tax our leaders. The world today is driven by what? The youth. And we should also key into this. And that is my submission. I want to thank you very, very much, Mr. Emmanuel Ayegun. I'm Director, African Center for Parliamentary and Constitutional Studies. Been speaking about the leadership question. Thank you so much for your time and your perspectives.